four, three, two, one. Yes, it's the Gruesome Twosome, it's Michael Burhan and Mr. Nick Horacek as we are doing tonight's edition of Slamcast. I have no idea where the fuck Brandon Lingen is, no the fuck idea where Dave Way is, probably both asleep, maybe together, who knows. But we're going to do a great show, action-packed, full of wrestling fun facts, fan fiction, fiction, fucking Britishness. Yes, it's a great show, it's going to be amazing because we have the best wrestling news and wrestling info on this show today and the great thing about it as well is well there's just two of us to talk about it so it means it's gonna be a quick show so we have myself and also the host for the most mr nick horacek Yeah, and I have to admit, it's, you know, we've got some good stuff going on in in terms of what's been happening. We've had a new NXT World Heavyweight Champion, uh, and, and I will consider it a World Heavyweight title now because of the fact, you know... It was defended in Japan. Yeah, of course. And we, we have the man, the myth, the legend. I called it, by the way, the gentleman who is now known as Finn Balor. So, Nick, tell us a little bit about that. What's your, what's your feelings on that one? So, I'm watching this thing well after it aired. So, I'm going to go into the motherfucker. But this is the one thing I knew was going to happen. It was one of those things, I mean, they currently have the entire pomp and circumstance. The streamers, Owens being the terrific heel that he is. Chucking the flowers into the crowd. At one point during the match, he went to, like, he was going to run off the ropes, kick him in the back. Just drops him, rear naked, you know, uh, chin lock, puts him on the mat, like, I hate this stupid country. <laughs> it's just Owens doing what he does best, being a dick. Yeah, I totally agree with you. He's the the thing about Kevin Owens what makes him so spectacular is he's one of those heels that you you're wondering about, but you also like as well because he's gritty, he's hard, and he's aggressive. He he's not the type of guy that you'll sit there and say, oh, you know, he's going to be, he, he's someone that we've got to look out for. No, he's, he literally does have that killer instinct. So, um, Nick, in, in terms of your feelings on the whole thing, how did you feel about the Beast from the East um, show from the Tokyo Dome? I didn't mind it, but it, to me, it just seemed like a regular episode of Raw. Yeah, it, it seemed a lot more like um, they they did it because they needed an extra network special, kind of like Elimination Chamber. It was like last minute, think about to see if they can add some more people. You know, um, and I, I enjoyed it. I, I I enjoyed most of it. I felt there was a few things like the Jericho match uh, was all right, but not amazing. I don't really give a shit about it too much. Um, yeah. And the, the end match with John Cena, I felt like the Balor title win should have been the end match. Oh, yeah. You know, that, that's the moment I should have closed the show. Hmm. That yeah. You know, I, 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 I want to know what the hell they were thinking about that. Maybe it was kind of their way of, of getting everyone to go home happy. You know, I don't know what the Japs need. They need John Cena, goddammit. 
show. He's got to be he's got to be speed of wind. No way. It's going to show. God, you know what? As far as I'm concerned, the real main event was Bowler and Owens. That, that tag match was... I, I just didn't care. But, I mean, we did see the murder of Kofi Kingston. Yeah, that was... Uh... That was lethal. <laughs> oh my god, you knew that wasn't going to last long. Once Brock got his clutches on him, Suplex City bitch. God. Yeah. You ever see that meme of a, a maniacal Vince laugh? He said, we want me to push more black people, so I pushed Kofi Kingston in the Brock Lesnar. <laughs> oh, man. But that was a, a still a fun two hours. I mean, obviously, Nikki wins LOL. Because I, I guarantee they're trying. She's going to be the one to break AJ Lee's title record so they never have to mention her on TV again. Yeah, I, I'm not a fan of it. I, I don't like the matches as is. Do you know what I mean? I, I really don't don't get what they're doing. It's not... It's not something like that I... that I appreciate, if that makes sense. It, it's It's... It's one of those where I felt the the match could have been a lot more, and I think Paige should have got the win here, even if it was non-title. But they just they they didn't want to do it that. Um, yeah, she did, she did, and um, again she's trying to hold, do the whole Dusty Rhodes tribute thing, and it just looked really weird. Yeah, I don't, I don't think she gives a fuck anyway. She just does her. Um, yeah, no, I agree. Um, and he was featured in the video recently for UFC. Um, you know, I, I'm not too sure about it I think it's what it is but hey you know um I just I, 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 me neither but I just don't think it's, it's the wisest of career decisions especially after you've had your knees rebuilt um and you've suffered god knows how many fucking injuries and you've nearly died mm. yeah and uh, oh, in wrestling news recently, actually as well, a long-time writer by the name of Brian Gerwitz, Mister <laughs> Rabbit Face, uh, as they like to call him, um, has left the WWE and signed on as a producer for The Rock's production company, Seven Bucks Productions. He will serve at cultivating and creating new projects under The Rock's banner, and also uh, do deal with The Rock's promos when The Rock comes back to WWE to do an odd Wrestlemania here and there I'm I really I'm, I'm sick of Brian Goetz anyway I'm glad he's gone he's another one who thinks he's his head's really inflated um, in terms of you know what he does and the importance of his work so we shall see you know Yeah. Hmm. It's either they are getting the Emmy nomination or it's being discussed. It's like right around there. But yeah. You know, um, I I just I don't I don't know what what to react to it apart from the fact of one big meh. Um, you know, so it, it's it is what it is in terms of that. Um, we've also found out that a leaked WWE script of Vince McMahon telling the 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 basically the um, play by play guys exactly what to do. Do you know what I mean? And people are surprised by this. I'm not. Yeah. Um. So tell us, enlighten us a little bit about what you think. This is, in a sense.
these bullet points, okay, what do you need? This point, this point, this point, go. That's what always made the rocks fun, the Austin's fun, they would feed off each other, they would, be, they would feed off the crowd, stuff like that. It's, and the announcing, I, I just kind of tuned out anyway, at, at some point, but I, they've got, it, it's so restrictive that we're just starting to yeah, I, I I agree, you know, um, and, and Mick was even saying it as well, and it was it was one of those situations where Vince tends to try and and make you to be an announcer, someone like in kind to what he wants, and the problem is that I you've even said it and I've said it, he's very outdated in terms of his values, you know. And that's kind of the way it is, in a sense. Um, but I'm not. I'm not really worried about it in t too much. He, I, I think now that it's out there, they may change the start of doing things. Hopefully, once people get used to it. But we shall see. Um, yeah. Now. Yeah, I agree. Totally and utterly agree on that one. Um, and let, let's uh, talk a little bit about the TNA and the GFW situation. The fact that they've signed the majority of TNA's talent. Uh, and apparently there's no sign of, of GFW even buying out TNA. Apparently GFW are trying to create their own... The, yeah, because apparently it's going to be him versus the imaginary bear. I don't think so either. He's going to be their new champion, and I've got a funny feeling as well that, um, you know, the beatdown clan is going to be gone. And this was a, a gimmick that I thought had legs, but they kind of killed it <laughs> and went with the whole, you know. Mm. Putting her through a table made her see the light in Jesus. Yeah, and I agree with you. It's 
the thing is, every time they, they do something like, this is going to save TNA, this is going to save TNA, and it's like, no, it really isn't. Nothing. Yeah, no, I agree, and it, it it's it's killing the the company is on its deathbed, and the the problem is with TNA is they don't really know what they're doing and why they're doing it, you know, and I, I've yeah, and a lot of the guys who have left have pointed the blame strictly on Dixie Carter. Yeah, but the problem is, you don't have Vince McMahon's testicular fortitude, in a, in a sense. No, she, she has more than that. You know, but Panda Energy have cut them off. Like, Daddy said, no, no, you know, stop writing those blank checks, young lady. Mm. You know, and it's, and that's the problem. Dixie doesn't know what to do in her playpen. Uh, you know, and... Yeah, exactly, and and the problem is, I think TNA is just going to be a blip in history because of the way it's been mishandled, and and it's actually quite funny because someone's actually pointed out the fact that imagine a company that's been mishandled for years and years, and they've still managed to keep the fucking thing afloat, even though it's been mishandled. Imagine if it was handled better, they probably would be doing a lot better with the company as is, and it's it's kind of the the way that they they want to do things and it, it's fine but i i just don't see how they can save it and the fact that the title's been declassified for pwi most people are like, oh, that's not a big thing it is a big thing being caught saying that your title was not a true world title anymore it's kind of fucked them Yeah. But you know what, I, I will say this about Ethan Carter, I don't have an issue with him whatsoever. But as the the, the company's champion, I don't think he's ready. I really don't. I think they're just getting desperate. Okay, we're gonna throw it on you know, I wasn't too thrilled the fact that he you know, he's you know, they associate with Dixie Carter right away, so that kind of style would be on him immediately. Yeah, I agree. And, and that's kind of where it lies in a sense. It's they're trying to do something and and kind of put a false band-aid in a sense. And th what makes me laugh is Slammiversary. Their fucking company's pay-per-view here. They were supposed to use it, you know, uh, as the reboot of the company. Instead, no, we're not going to do that. We're going to wait until the impact after the fact to do a title change. And Slam Reversary just seemed like an irrelevant piece of shit. And so I remember someone just looked at it and went, yeah, I'm glad I'm not going to actually pay for that pay-per-view because there's no point. There's no title match there. There's no world title defense. Yeah, I agree. Um, and, and that's where the problem lies. I, I think they they don't... It's poor planning creates piss-poor performance. I think their brand awareness is another thing as well. The new uh, director of operations in terms of branding says that the company needs to brand itself a lot more, uh, which, you know, they've said that since God knows how long. And, and Victoria went on to uh, JR's podcast talking about the fact that she wants to punch, you know... Dixie Carter in the face. 
you, do you know what I mean? Uh, based on the fact that she's just... That's another thing as well, you know, and I find it extremely annoying the fact that they've done that. You know, it, it's they, they don't seem to know what they're doing and why they're doing it anymore. That the hand kind of slap, you know, cuts its nose off to spite the face. Now, going on from that, Ring of Honor, we've seen you know the new Ring of Honor World Heavyweight Champion, um, and I, I really hoped that the title wouldn't go away. Um, but we're now seeing a title tournament for the Ring of Honor Television Championship, which has become the, sec the company's secondary title. Um, and, and it was held by Jay Lee for white. I love the fact they've transitioned him from being the you know TV chap all the way to you know the new the World Heavyweight Championship. Yeah, and it is a great thing. It's a great situation. I like the way that it's going. Raw wasn't that great this this year as well. Uh, well, this week, shall I say, this year, um, it, it just seemed like a filler Raw, you know. Yeah, it was roughly about the same, apart from Brock Lesnar like you know throwing the car door into the fans. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I I I did crack up to that, and then he just like dismantled and destroyed the car. Yeah. yeah, and I I don't know I don't I don't know what to how to see it in in the end. It it seems very much that. Uh, I do love the fact that they they actually gave the fan tons of like merchandise to square things. It's like here, take take some merch. We're we're sorry. Yeah, it was like yeah, you know we we will um we'll give you this <laughs> to say sorry. Yeah, just please don't sue us. Please don't sue us. Um, but yeah, I, I don't, I don't see it as a uh, as a situation escalating any further than what it has. Um, but I, I can, I can see how the Brock versus Rollins is turning into a very, very tough situation because. From all intents and purposes, it looks like Rollins is going to lose the title come Battleground, which I, I really hope not. You know, because I'm I'm a big fan of Rollins. I'm a big fan of him as a heel in the company and being a top guy. Um, but I I really, especially due to the ratings going down and things slowing down a bit for the company, I I could see him. You know, in in a situation. Mm. So going on from that though, let's ask about Tough Enough. Apparently, the ratings for Tough Enough are shockingly low, and a lot of it, yeah, a, a lot of it from USA standpoint is due to the issue with one. They feel that Jericho is not great as a host. Uh, they thought Austin was a lot better. They feel that the the company, the the way they do the pre tapes and then do half the show live, is hurting the show itself because there's no real drama. 
um, and they feel that the, that it's a lot more rigged and that there's no standout superstar who actually comes from Tough Enough. What do you think? Who already said that she was going to fucking be there? She got eliminated the last time. They they, they eliminated her from like the first 100 or something, didn't they? And now she's back there again. She's It's it's a rig. And it really pisses me off the fact that, you know... Hmm... Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, it was reality television, and at the moment, I don't really see this as reality TV. Um, yeah, you can tell they're trying to do the same thing with this, like they're doing with Total Divas, and it does, and it it smells of bullshit. And yeah, and and that's the thing, and this is where it goes. Um, I was I would say that it, it they they don't know how to kind of present it and they think if we if we lie about it then that can kind of help you know no. but I don't know so yeah I I don't But that, that's the thing, they haven't gotten someone, what they tend to do is they, they hire the person and they get rid of them like a couple of weeks into into their time. And that's where the problem lies. It's about progression. If you're The, the thing about it is, Tough Enough isn't the, the kind of the, the plateau, it's the after effect. You want to see how this goes afterwards, how the company moves forward with the person. And if they can make this person into a bona fide star. And she's terrible. <laughs> oh, she's so Somebody call a fucking trainer. You, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. It, it's the problem is, I would love to see the story that they work with on it, and they don't seem to be knowing. Hmm. Yeah, and that's the thing. It, it's you want to see someone get better, and you want to see someone progress. 
and I, I just don't think that they're doing that at the moment and that's the problem in in terms of yeah and that's the thing I think they need to find out exactly what they're doing with it and how they're going to do it um, in terms of what the show's got going on at the moment no one really sees what's happening they're all they're seeing is a bunch of people like oh this guy's a real guy and then like no really he isn't you know it, it, it's Yeah. And it, it's like, oh my god, like some of these people are just fucking stupid. Yeah. But with, like I said, American Gladiators, or Survivor, or Big Brother, or Fear Factor, or, you know, any reality show like that, you know there's a reality element. Yeah. There's a major element, and you don't feel like the producers are picking and choosing who they want to see in the future. You know, it's, there's a competition aspect to it, there's, but with this, there's none of that. Yeah. It doesn't seem competitive. It doesn't seem uh, progressive. Yeah, it just... Yeah. Yeah, and, I, and that's the problem. It's... I, I don't think they know what it is they're they're trying to do with it you know um and they keep trying to change the format to see what they can if they can push something different and to me definitely that's exactly it that they they don't know how they're going to fix things you know and that's where things have gone a bit awry in a sense um i think also the fact that jericho just seems like they, they've said he seems really bland he doesn't know what he wants to what he wants to do you know well apparently he he wants to get his face out there because uh, one of the rumors going around is that his concerts aren't selling as well because he's not on tv as much the reason why the concerts are selling as well as they usually do is because he's on WWE TV performing. No, I agree, and that's the the problem. It, it's I, I don't think they they know what they're doing. I, I think Jericho is trying to to push his own agenda in a sense, and I don't think he's as immersed in the competition that he wants to be. And with yeah, 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 and I think that's kind of the way the. That that's kind of where the the problem lies, and I think with Austin, Austin's the guy who's very aggressive in a sense. You know, he knows what he's doing and how he's doing it, um, and and that's kind of where the problem lies in in the whole situation. I, I think what's happening is. In, in with Austin, he's always been very direct. He's always been very passionate. He's like, "You don't deserve to be here. Prove to me that you do." Jericho's like, "Ooh, theatrical. That's theatrics. Let's do as much theatrics as possible." And it's like, "No, we we don't want that. We want the hard hitting kind of presenter. We don't want the guy who's just being there so he wants to wear loads of makeup." You know. Um, but going on from that, let's 
let's talk a little bit about the the upcoming like pay per view and what and what you think in terms of Battleground. Do you think Battleground's gonna is it escalating into a, a top notch pay per view or do you think it's just gonna I agree. Former NXT champion. He's the guy. I think he's being. He had the title removed from him in order to prepare him for the US title victory. No, I totally agree. I don't see this as a good situation I, I i can see it in, in terms of owens versus c owens needs a good clean win yes. and if he doesn't get it yeah I think maybe Cena will will you know lay down and take it so to speak, but we shall see in terms of what happens. <laughs> he he never counts out on two. Um, but you know. Yeah, so we got we got that going on. What what do you think about it? I've got a funny feeling Miz is coming out of this one, the champion. Yeah. Yeah, and we're going to see Miz, maybe Miz and Show go for the title, or Miz defend it against Ryback and Show. I don't, I don't think this is going to be a classic in its own right, but I think it's going to 
it's going to do something <laughs> if that makes sense you know yeah yeah that, that's pretty much on that one um in in terms of uh we got like the women's championship match haven't we Yeah, I agree with you. Um, it, it's. Yeah, and you know, in, in terms of that, what, what do you think? Do you think they're just trying to push? Cause the card seems pretty lackluster, other than Lesnar versus Rollins, in a sense. And Rollins and Cena are going to have a kick-ass match. Yeah. As long as Cena doesn't do that, fucking they'll they'll steal the show again. Yeah, he does. That looks like that's going to kill someone eventually. You know, it it just it it to me it it just seems as a bit it he jumps off those ropes. It looks like he's gonna like break someone's neck because of the way that he lands on it, and uh, as yeah. Yeah, and and apparently Austin's in a bit of hot water with Vince. And speaking of someone who's in hot water, did you hear about the Piper situation? Piper has been let out of his. Well, uh, Roddy Piper has been let out of his deal with uh, Vince and Co. And a lot of it. Uh, but Austin actually admitted that he got it taken off because he felt that it was an insult. And I, I can't, I don't know. I, I think the, these two guys who have just gotten their wires crossed, and I think Piper's taken it too far because he wanted to be let out of his deal. He didn't want to associate with the WWE or Austin. He felt like he was being pigeonholed, and it's a shame, really. Uh, apparently, David Otonga attended a house show recently. Um, he, yeah, he he looks big. But he doesn't look ripped. He he looks really like. He, he has never been anything. He has never been a decent. I've never seen him. Like he looks like he's been around for a while. He looks like he's been around for a while. I totally agree. I I'm. I, I think you know he's he's part of their legal team, isn't he, at the moment? Apparently. Yeah. Yeah, but um, going on from that, let's uh, talk about one like final thing. 
in terms of like companies and in, in, in terms of what's going on with the WWE where do you see TNA's future do you think that, T- that WWE is going to take over TNA's tape library and, and that's the end of that Yeah, I love that match. It's one of my favorites. And, and that was around the time I started watching TNA. But I remember they did such a good job of building up how personal that feud how long it had been going. Yeah. You know, Dusty Rhodes, he, he was the director of authority at the time. And he came out in Victory Road when they had that ridiculous vote to who was going to be the DOA. And they made that. Uh, I had it on the and if Scott Hudson, like, there's a problem with the point down in Connecticut, and, like, it's just these, it's, it's, like, there's a problem with both sort of, like, just these in-joke, like, jokes that people are going to call them to that election. Shots at Connecticut, it's like, whatever. Mm. And they, you know, AMW and Triple X had that last team standing match, which is actually pretty good in its own right. But Dusty Rhodes comes out, and he's like, oh, we got to add this thing to Triple H, Triple X, AMW, and he's like, Six sides of steel, losing team must be spent. And I, I watched it build up, and, and that match, it was bloody, it was brutal. I mean, you had heel skipper walking the top of the cage, you had, just, you know, Triple X <laughs> with the handcuffs was so good. And then it gets turned on him in the end. With the, like, I would say that is easily one of the best cage matches of all time. Yeah. No, I agree, and, and that's the thing. I think they've they've kind of bitten off more they can chew. They're hoping to, you know, get the lack of depth in the roster sorted by having new guys come in for cheaper. But the problem is, there's that consistency and brand awareness. They still haven't got it right. And it's like, come on. And I think in the end, it's gonna it, it it literally will bite them in the ass, and the company will lose that TV deal. And have nothing left, and it's a shame. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, I agree with you on that one. So let's. Uh, I think we we can finish the show on that note. Um, instead of doing the ice, sh- I, I think we'll leave that to Brandon next time. So um, Nick, let's talk about your future supercard. How are you doing on that? Yeah. It's like no one is really seeing the time, the idea to grind their ass off the entire weekend. So I, I think I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna try and get these two Ziggler. It's gonna be Ziggler. With you know, love to be way better. Yeah. No, I agree with you on that one. Um, well, I've, I've got like a, a couple of new survivors. Yeah. Like, I didn't have to. I ground my ass off that one week when I got that legendary rock, and that was a few months ago. I think the login bonuses have really helped as well. Right. It, it's been all more. It's just been more food, you know. It's helped. Yeah. I mean, with WrestleMania uh, food, you now need five epics to complete that cycle. Yeah. So. 
Um, and I haven't got any WrestleManias yet. I'm hoping to, to get some eventually. Um, so on that note... I'm on Survivor Plus Plus, yeah. So, uh, on that note, um, Nick, where can we find you? Yeah, I'm over on Twitter at GamingPegasus27. I'm on Instagram at Pegasus27. I'm on Facebook at Nick Karachek. I'm on Xbox Live, we do Pegasus27. Um, Supercard Pegasus27, find me if you want to get the story by all road to glory cards, except for my Diva, which still fun to see now because I had all the rest of my Pro Diva and they haven't. <laughs> And I didn't grab my ass off during that page. Nikki PCC to try and get those. So, yeah, I'm the, as diva problems seem to be what everyone has, you know. Uh, pretty much and on me find me at youtube.com for slash Dina genius I've just done a video on the whole concept situation uh, the fact that I feel that they, it's wrong that they're double dipping and how kickstarting for big companies has changed the face of the gaming industry in a sense where it's becoming extremely negative because these guys are trying to get their hands on tax free money and I think in a Fune especially the way that he's handled Mighty Number no. 9 has kind of uh, set the situation in, in motion and given his company a very negative uh, standing. So, going on from that, guys, we will say uh, this has been Michael Burhan and Nick Hojcik, and we will see you next time in the ring.